channel, I talk about buckets all the time. And, you know, if you look on the surface or you catch one or two of my videos, you may not get the depth and complexity of my portfolio. I say that tongue in cheek because I think that when you look at investing as an independent investor, I think it really helps to break the information down. If you try to look at this thing holistically, you're probably going to be lost. You're probably going to do what most people do is resort to the services of a financial planner. Uh, it really doesn't have to be that difficult. So when I declare these portfolio makeups to you guys, and that's what we're going to do, we're going to go over the statistics on my nine, count them, nine total buckets in the portfolio. Pretty impressive. I really couldn't believe it until I got into it. But we've really expanded the reach this year in 2021. And moving into 2022, I've got a few fundamental goals in the direction that I want to take this portfolio really kind of embolden some of these other areas uh, of the portfolio as, as we look to build it out and, and build upon what we've uh, evolved to now uh, over the years. I do want to, to, to stress to you guys a, a couple of things here. Majority of the wealth in the portfolio is comprised in tax uh, advantaged accounts here um, in the Roth IRA, as well as the TSP Roth. So there's a ton of different elements here, and I'm going to try to highlight them for you so it can establish a framework for you guys to understand how it is that I seek my wealth in the nine buckets, first one being passive. It's the most important. It's the dominant percentage of weighting in the portfolio. The passive element takes up right on 30% of the portfolio. This is contrary to some schools of thought to just go exclusively passive in your life, et cetera, et cetera. Seek out the passive and you invest in, let's say, just a total world market index or a total domestic stock market index. You can do that. You can win with that strategy. As I've evolved with my philosophy, I've understood that a passive program, albeit as great as it can be for the masses out there, uh, it, it's, it's, it's great in a bull market, and it really doesn't give you any other options in, in a prolonged bear market or even during recessionary times. And I think there is some inherent value that become um, that much more apparent during those times of volatility. And I'll talk about that when I get into the dividends and, and how that's so important to be able to render some of those dividends off of the portfolio. Um, on some of those value plays, but 30% of the strategy, that's a big part of my wealth here at about $151,647. That's to the T down to the, the, the dollar amount that I've got devoted to passive investing. What was the definition of passive investing for me? It was either an ETF or an index fund. Very, very simple. Okay. Each and every one of the ETFs or index funds are represented in 11 sub buckets or sub strategies within passive investing. And I'll go through those 11 for you now. This is going to be like 11 stock picks in a minute, but here they are. This is how they're represented in my portfolio. VTI, talk about it all the time. The triple Qs, VNQ which is Vanguard's real estate REIT. I own that exclusively in the Roth. And then to complement it, VPU, which is the Vanguard's utilities ETF, VIG, which is uh, Vanguard's dividend appreciation fund. I own that in my Roth. Um, VO, which is the mid cap uh, ETF that I've just as of late added into one of the sub accounts. I believe I hold that in, in Weeble. It's a kind of a cool idea to go after some mid cap there and, and kind of build that out a little bit. Um, VUG, which is Vanguard's growth, um, the thrift savings plan, which is the government sponsored, that's all index funds. Um, they don't allow single stock investing. They've got, you know, very, very tailored down to a few options, um, five uh, to be specific. Um, and I own three of them, three index funds there in the thrift savings plan. And then the M1 sectors. I talk about this uh, all the time, about a $20,000 bill in that but it is just a strategic sub uh, arm of my passive portfolio, 11 total, which makes up 30% of the total overall portfolio. That's what makes up the 151 of aggregate dollars that are invested in each of these 11 subcategories. VBK, which is Vanguard small cap growth. And then finally, one of my favorite, if not my absolute favorite ETF is to grab that S&P 500 exposure through the VOO. 
So that's how it shakes out. That's my passive portfolio. I think a lot of people, they may tune into the channel and they're like, geez, Ryan, you're, 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 you're highly on all the way. I think you'll find that when I declare the percentages to you, you're going to maybe understand a little bit more holistically as to why I do what it is that I do. The next bucket out of the nine total buckets that I've got here, some of these are going to kind of surprise you guys. But the dividend growth strategy is a kind of a, a value type of strategy that I've got. Um, I, I, the, the criteria for this is very, very simple, single stock. So the dividend growth strategy is comprised with value stocks of companies that pay a dividend and have paid that dividend for many, many years, and in a lot of cases, many, many decades um, on top of each other. That makes up my, my dividend growth element to the portfolio. A lot of single stock holdings there. And that comes in a close second at 28%. So if you lump the dividend strategy with the passive strategy, we're talking about just shy of 60% of my total portfolio is locked up in equities that I really don't have any reason to sell ever. Uh, very, very simple, right? Furthermore, a lot of those assets are housed, both tax protected and wealth preserved in that any of these dividend stocks that I own, I pay zero in trading commissions. I pay zero in annual fees over my self-directed account. And I just enjoy being an investor. Now, I could have lumped these in with the passive uh, type of perspective because, again, I buy these, uh, these and I dividend reinvest them and I don't sell them. I, I just own them. Okay, but the dividend growth strategy is actually comprised in only two sub buckets, only two single stock. Number one, number two is the M1 dividends portfolio, and that's flirting with just shy of $30,000 in that portfolio. Total, total money amount devoted to this strategy is $137,759 down to its granular dollar amount. It's fun to be fully uh, disclosed to you guys, because I want you to understand the context uh, surrounding seeking that higher than average dividend growth in some of those great companies. I mean, this is made up of your Microsoft, Apple, your 3M, um, even some of your value companies that actually over the last couple of years has suspended the dividend. I did include that into this dividend category because if it met the criteria of a value stock, I went ahead and lumped it in here, um, having it not be considered a, a, a growth type of an arm. Okay, so out of the dividends in the passive here, we're looking at 58% total represented the portfolio. We're almost six tenths of the way done. Um, and we're in our first two categories. So the other category, significantly less exposure. And if I just earmark cash next as one of those buckets that I put a lot of value on, um, right now, I'm probably a little bit more cash rich than I, than I would like to be, I guess. Uh, but for the times now that I'm in saving to cash and some of my strategic goals down the line of having some down payment money for real estate, it makes sense to have the level of cash that I do in the accounts, which uh, is about $72,804 of cash. A lot of you guys might think that that's crazy, Ryan, you're, you're crazy. You carry in too much cash. It might be true in the time being. Um, and, and I do acknowledge that I'm probably a little more cash rich than I, that, than I would want to be, but I don't think the market is a market that is conducive to being fully levered 100%. Um, if we were at pandemic lows, um, it sure is nice to have those opportunities to roll back some, some, some idle cash uh, into the portfolio on a downturn. I still think the market's trading at all-time highs. That's just me. Um, so I do justify having some sleep easy money in case of an emergency um, and to actually just add another buffer and layer. You know, It's to do or not to do. I choose to do. And a lot of people choose not to do, and they might have a few hundred bucks and they're ill prepared to deal with an emergency situation if it comes up. But 15% of my total overall wealth is comprised right now in cash. And I do think that's a little much, but if you take the 60 you know, percent in the dividend and the dividend growth and add the cash on top of it, you're talking about three quarters of my wealth right there comprised in the first three categories of, 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 of how I accumulate wealth. So we're at 75% and we're only in three out of the nine buckets that I'm going to disclose to you now uh, on this on this rollout. The next one is everybody's favorite. You guys be happy to know I've got 8% of the total overall portfolio in growth. This is comprised of your Google, uh, your, uh, your Amazon uh, of the world. Um, this is your salesforce.com. Any of those companies that don't pay a dividend, 
that's more in the growth trajectory uh, in in their um, uh, in their specific uh, cycle uh, in the evolution of the company. I went ahead and threw into this uh, section of the portfolio. So thirty nine thousand eight hundred and twenty three just in the growth category. Um, I I feel like that's prudent. Um, when you declare the numbers this way and you kind of look back and say, gosh, am I over levered in Google? Am I over levered in Amazon? When you look at it collectively over the bucket of growth and, and, and you look at it from that perspective, I absolutely can have, you know, almost one out of every $10 that I have in my total portfolio uh, invested in growth. So it, it just kind of makes sense, to be honest with you. So 8% there. Um, we're up to about, uh, that's 83% of the total portfolio represented. And we start to get into some of the subcategories in the portfolio that, although they are significantly less, they are worth disclosing to you guys, because as time goes along, I expect that these will grow um, and these will mature over time and they will absolutely render the strategic benefit um, that I put them in place to do. Um, that is the kids account. Um, I've got both college accounts, 529s, and UTMAs uh, comprised for each of my children, okay? Now, I do have other checking and savings established for them already. Um, they've got the independent investor as their dad, so this is just how it shakes out. Some serious wealth in there, uh, especially on the college side of the house. We're talking about an aggregate of about 24000 just over 24000 uh, of college dollars and UTMA, which is um, uh, Uniform Transfer to Miners Act, and it's accounts established for them uh, as a gift to get to, uh, to gift to them when they reach the vesting age, uh, depending on where we're domiciled at the time, either 18 or 21. Uh, but 24000 in that represents 5% of the portfolio. 5% of the portfolio, man, I gift to my kids. Um, it is part of the, the bottom line. 5% out of a half a million dollars is, you know, pretty significant amount of money there. Uh, but, uh, but that's what we're working with there in 24,000 there. Um, the, the next couple here I will declare to you is, um, is, is, is an interesting one. This is the one that all, anybody's always interested in. And I could roll out a video just on this speculation uh, section. Everybody's really interested in the highly on as of late, there's some of my most popular videos when they turn into the channel, but I, I really think it's going to benefit even the highly on holders to understand, my goodness, Ryan's just declared 83% of the portfolio, and he's yet to talk about highly on what gives. Gosh, I thought his entire portfolio was in that stock. This is not true. When you look at it in context, this is wealth building at its granular level, and it really helps you understand that there are different layers uh, in the portfolio as you build and mature these out over time, and it, and it becomes quite complex. But at the same time, you know, <laughs> a Ferrari engine is going to run like a Ferrari engine, and 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 this is what it takes to to kind of master this craft is to appreciate that your portfolio doesn't have to be comprised in a one fund fits all type of application. It doesn't have to fit that way because there will be elements of this portfolio that outperform when those tried and true methods that the fundamentalists want to preach about all the time um, are, are, are maybe lagging a little bit. And, you know, they, they can feed each other. You know, it's amazing how I can get a real run up in growth. And if I take some profit off the table, I can roll that into passive. Whereas if you just go passive all the time, well, you're stuck either with the appreciation or the depreciation in the market. Just makes sense to me. Uh, and plus, I like a little bit more dynamic application with my profile. Um, the speculation, we're talking here, 62,000. Uh, 326. This is your uh, SoFi's of the world. This is where Hylion uh, is comprised in this specific uh, application. 12%. 12% is where I've got, and 12% now, if I looked at the market total overall, I would say that the market is overvalued. But some of these speculation companies have really come off and the value proposition is screaming. Uh, I would contend that a lot of these are in oversold categories. And, you know, it kind of begs the, the question, should you have some of these um, in some of these companies that, you know, a lot of people will say, well, don't touch them. You'll never make any money. I, I beg to differ. I, I've made a lot of money with growth and a lot of money with speculation over the years. So, you know, to say that it, it's just absolutely futile and you will absolutely lose, I think is short sighted. I really do. And I think it really benefits individuals if they can look at the whole holistic uh, application of the stock market. Uh, if you want to take the easy 
passive road the rest of your life, you can totally do that. Absolutely. But you may be given up a little opportunity there by putting a little more risk on the table and realizing exponentially uh, a, a much larger return. Do it in scale. Like I said, 12%. And a lot of that is tied up right now in a very large position in highly on holdings. About 50,000 of those dollars are tied up in that, in that holding right now. Uh, but 12% uh, nonetheless there uh, in that specific element. So the rest of the buckets here are significantly less. I've covered the big buckets, but the final three that I want to talk about in probably order of precedence is the bond portfolio, which is only a quarter point in the portfolio. Very, very small, uh, just $1,162 in the bond portfolio. I'll roll that out exclusively to show how I seek that exposure to the short, intermediate, long, and extended duration bonds, both on the government debt side and the corporate debt side. I do that through the Vanguard ETFs. It renders about a 3% dividend. And going forward over the next 20 years, I'm going to look to embolden that account up and just hold bonds exclusively in that account and just allow that to kind of give me a higher than average uh, uh, appreciation on the interest side. Um, like I said, it, it does render 3%. You're going to beat any savings account out there by going ahead and putting a little bit of capital to risk in the bond portfolio. Uh, the second is the crypto element, and the crypto is just about a half a percent, even less, about four tenths of a percent in the portfolio. Um, this is comprised uh, of uh, five different holdings within that crypto portfolio. Um, there's some Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, some Shibu Unu, as well as some Litecoin in there as well. Um, a very speculative level of, 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 I don't even want to call it investing, but I do own that in a Roth IRA. So if that does run away from me and actually materialize over time, it could very, very be a very, very powerful asset in that I can transfer those profits from my existing crypto IRA uh, into my self-directed Roth IRA and maybe look to leverage some of the, that crypto profit uh, into some of the value plays. If it doesn't happen, no big deal. It's a very, very speculative element to the portfolio. I put that in there. I was very much willing to see the fluctuation go up and down, and I'm perfectly comfortable with that. The last bucket that I'll talk about, and it's worth mentioning, is about 1.5% of the portfolio, and that is tied up in options uh, for the majority of this in long calls. Um, I didn't talk about the premiums that I collect on some of the cash-secured puts contracts that I write, I, it was kind of uh, insignificant because the contracts that I write are only uh, rendering me a few hundred dollars of premium. I write those for about 30 days on an average, but the long call options, I do have a, a fairly interesting amount, $7,427 wrapped up in some call options. Most of these are highly on call options leaps which are long call options, most of them into 2024. Those are the optimal premiums right now uh, or, or multiple uh, year of expiry that you can get into on those options contracts. So that's the portfolio as it shakes, guys. Nine total buckets. I've given you some sub categories in each of these buckets, but 2021 will close out half a million bucks total in the portfolio, $505,000. Closing it out, self-directed investing is very, very real. I'm one of the very, very few people that talk about it. And how many people come on and talk about how complex of a portfolio that I just declared to you? I mean, 11 total ETFs just within my passive bucket. 75% of my wealth is tied up in cash, dividend growth strategy, and passive with a few more dynamic applications, guys. It doesn't get any better than this, man. It's investing is what I do. Love to teach that general fundamental framework of how to construct a portfolio. Hope you got some benefit out of it, guys. And to leave your comments at the bottom of the video, share the message, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you enjoy the message coming through, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the portfolio fundamentals from 2021. I'm super stoked on how it shook out, guys. Thanks again for tuning in and good luck in your investment future.